Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. What's going on, everybody? This is Dennis Hurl from the FantasySidelineShow.com. Another mock draft show. This one after the injury is kind of giving you guys an idea of where everybody is going. We're still a few minutes away from draft time, about uh, about another minute or so before the draft room opens. With that time, I do want to say thank you, everybody, for the iTunes downloads. We are breaking our download record. We're, we're, we're top 15 on iTunes for fantasy football. We are we're up there on Stitcher, uh, Smart Radio. You can catch us there. We are on schoolofthelegends.com, a website run by the NFLPA. A big thank you to our guest, Steve Lemmy, last week. That show is now four overall on iTunes for most downloaded shows for whatever the reason. I don't know why, but we own three of the top four most downloaded podcasts on iTunes. Guys, thank you so much. If I had an applause thing, I would, uh, I'd pop it out for you guys. Way to go. I didn't do it all. And I know normally we can have Nate's mom click and download over and over again. Not this time, Nate. No, she pulled a muscle in her thumb, so she's out for two, three weeks. Nice. John Dieter, what's up, buddy? Hey, I'm glad I don't have carpal t- tunnel syndrome like Nate's mom, though. I'm ready to draft tonight. That's for a different reason, but we're not going to get into it on the show. Mock draft, a lot of injuries. Chad Johnson headbutting his wife. We got a lot to discuss and go over as we as we move into this mock draft show. We will keep you up to date on who goes where, kind of giving you an idea. I'm I'm really excited. I do love the mock draft shows. Uh, I'm really excited, man. You sound excited. I am. So our draft room is loading. Given you know, if you're listening on the podcast, it doesn't even mind you any right now. Uh, you know what? Ryan Matthews out four to six weeks. They're saying more to the six week. I'm going to say, guys, today uh, we're still in preseason. Depending on where you are listening to this, he will miss probably up until week five or week six. That's going to be my guess. That might be pushing it. Here's here's my thinking, guys. He comes back from the clavicle injury. We're already at week four. I, I think that's safe to say week four. You 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 still have to get him back into game shape. I I really don't I really don't see him being a real factor until week seven or eight. I didn't really see him being a factor at all. I mean, everyone's really high on Ryan Matthews. I am not. I think that he's gonna. I just think he's gonna choke. And with this injury, I just think it's even more reason to stay away from him. I think he has value, but not in the first round. That's where everybody was tick, picking him. If you would have told me maybe. Maybe realistically, the end of the second round, sure, I'd have been okay with that. You you wouldn't have had any complaints with, but I'm not taking him in the first round. And certainly, you know what, if he falls to me at the uh, middle or the end of a fourth round in a 12-team league, I would take Ryan Matthews there. Yep. I don't wish injury upon anyone. I don't, I don't want anyone to get hurt. I don't want to you know, see someone miss part of the season and everything. The worst thing that would have happened to me as a fantasy drafter is have Ryan Matthews get injured. It means that he's not going to get drafted in the first round anymore. It means that someone else is going to be taken, and I'm going to have to search for somebody else if I get after the Ryan Matthews pick. It, let me ask you guys this. Cedric Benson gets signed by the Green Bay Packers. To me, I think his ceiling is 650 yards to 700 yards, five touchdowns. Do you guys agree with that? I think he gets more touchdowns than that. Are you assuming he's not going to start? Because I really think that he's going to take the, the job away from Starks. I wish I could agree. I, I wish I could agree with you, but I'm not so sure that that I know. I know Starks will be there. He's younger. Cedric Benson probably will not get the full bulk bulk of the carry. So I don't know. I yeah. think they're going to use Ced as more of a third down back, short yardage back. I think he's going to get more touchdowns than five. I I put him more in the eight to ten range. But what uh, in a passing offense like Green Bay? Yeah, I'm more puzzled as to why Green Bay signed him. Why would you grab another guy that's just like Starks? You know, you think you have finesse back back there. They just grab another big guy. Maybe, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe so another team doesn't. You have uh, Richardson has the knee problems. You have uh, Ryan Matthews going down with the shoulder injury. M- maybe it was more of a preventative move so no one else could get him. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the Packers are afraid of the Browns. M- maybe not, <laughs> but you know what? W- what about the Chargers? I don't think the Packers are for the Chargers either. Here's the thing. I could see them more like, because I think the Lions could have benefited from a Cedric Benson at running back. I think they could have benefited from anybody at running back. So I could see the Packers maybe making that move so someone in their division doesn't pick them up. Well, just so you guys know already, 
Here we go. Um, it's Foster, Rice, and McCoy, one, two, three. I mean, pretty much what everybody And I have, I have the fourth pick right now, and I'm debating between Calvin Johnson and Aaron Rodgers. I, I will admit that there's been two seasons where I've gone um, undefeated. I took a quarterback in the first round. And it's been, I've only taken a wide receiver in the first round once in my life, and I'm leaning towards Calvin Johnson here over Aaron Rodgers. It's a, a toss-up. I can, you go either way on it. It's just that what Calvin Johnson brings to the table and just what he can do in the red zone by himself, good luck, good luck finding a better wide receiver. Yeah, I was going to say less chat, more, more draft. Wow. <laughs> Easy there. Slow it down, Sparky. Are so, you- I, I, here's the thing, and I'm not going to sort of try and sway your decision either way, but I think what Rodgers did last year, that I think that is – Pretty much his peak, and a lot of times you see a guy finish number one in their position. Now Calvin kind of did the same last year, but I don't see Rogers finishing as high this year as he did last year. Um, I don't know. I think I think the Patriots made the right moves in adding a lot of receivers and tight ends to their roster so that Brady could uh, really just kind of tear tear defenses apart, which is what he's good at. And I, I think Brady will finish ahead of Rogers this year. I'm not saying Rogers won't finish high, but I think in that situation, I think I would lean more towards Calvin. Um, just because I don't think Rodgers is going to finish as high this year, and there's a plethora of quarterbacks this year that you can choose from. Well, Aaron Rodgers goes into the fifth pick. By the way, Jim in the chat room has some great insight here. Uh, Nate, since you don't are since you're not drafting, can you keep an eye on the chat room as we go? I uh, will do my best. I mean, not that you have a big heavy load of you know work to do here, like watching the draft room. Thank you. Silence. Let's guys. Uh, we're waiting for the next pick to go on. I decided in a 12-team league, I want the last pick. I'm really, really excited this season. I want, I want to draft near the back end of all my drafts this season. I think that's the prime spot. I agree, because you know what you can get? McFadden, Adrian Peterson, 12-13. I'd take that any day. Well, I'm a little disappointed because 6th and 7th in the first round goes Chris Johnson, Tom Brady, then Drew Brees right after that. We have a run on quarterbacks, then. The only problem with that is, you, well, we're gonna, we'll see. We'll see where those, where those mid-tier quarterbacks like the Romos, Vic, and uh, Rivers go in this draft. They should go about fourth, fifth round, and May- Manning as well. So maybe, maybe there's an early run on quarterbacks. Well, that, that took a big dent out of my, my playbook of, I, w- I was hoping in the back end, I've seen Tom Brady slip to the end of the the first round. I was hoping maybe he would. Jimmy Graham goes number nine. God, everybody stealing all of my picks. You you really wanted Jimmy Graham in the first round? I was going to take him in the second. Uh, that might be a little bit of a reach right there. I wouldn't take any any tight end until like the third or fourth round if I'm even going to reach that high for him. I was okay with that kind of reach, though. There's so many guys this year. The tight end is probably, one of the deepest, tight end's probably the deepest position of, of all positions. I think Jimmy Graham is the only one of the tight ends that can repeat what he did last season. I agree with you, but I don't think Jimmy Graham by himself is going to carry your team. A running back can carry your team. A wide receiver, a, a top-tier wide receiver can carry your team, and so can a quarterback. You don't see it very often from a tight end. Well, I wasn't asking him to carry my team because I was going to hopefully have drafted a very capable replacement or, or, or a centerpiece to Jimmy Graham. I think wide receiver running back is deep. If you know who to get and where to get them, you can come out looking nice. Uh, Andre Johnson goes 10th. MJD goes 11th. Leaving me with taking Darren McFadden uh, with my first pick at the end of the first round, and I will have the first pick in the second round. And this is a tough one. You know what? I'm not very – man – Uh, there we go, and we're back. I still got 11 seconds to pick my pick. Uh, I'm 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 scrambling. I'm going with Roddy White. I I know. Listen, here here's the thing. A I had computer issues. <laughs> I'll be oh with you. come on! I had 11 seconds to uh, <laughs> pick who I wanted. B I really wanted Matthew Stafford. But I thought that was too early to take Matthew Stafford, who is now one of the top guys on the board. I don't like Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, Trent Richardson, I don't like Cam Newton. Rob Gronkowski, I don't think he'll do what he did last year. I think I think safe picks, Roddy White is right there. 
Yeah, he's he's absolutely the safe pick. I'm just I'm surprised you didn't go with AP. I was, I was just rooting I'm for you. Just to take him. No, you know what? I got Darren McFadden. Why? I had a great conversation on Twitter where a guy was telling me how he 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 took Ryan Matthews in the third round. He took Adrian Peterson in the second round, and how proud of himself he was. I and I was like, "Are you worried? I mean, you just drafted two of the top most injury prone running backs. I mean, there's if if you're going one injury prone running back, you should at least get someone you could trust that's healthy, right? It's well, well, it depends. If you if you back yourself up, you're fine. I'm okay with it if you grab their backups. We saw we saw last year what Bush can do. So it's not, it's it's more. I see. I think running backs are very overrated. It's a product of the offensive line, in my opinion. That's the running back itself. You need the skills and the speed to be there. But uh, you grab a good system. You grab the running back in that system. You'll you'll make out fine. Well, the second round goes down with me taking Roddy White, Adrian Peterson, Matt Forte, three, Larry Fitzgerald, Gronkowski, Demarco Murray, who I liked. I probably I probably may have should have gone Demarco, Matthew Stafford at seven, Trent Richardson at eight, even with knee injuries. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say about that one. Is no, no, thank you. I'm actually in a pickle right now. I have no idea who I want to draft. Nate, what do you think of about that right now? About round two so far. Yes. Um, a little nervous about Trent Richardson. Uh, I I hate to be super high on a rookie to begin with. I think I think he's gonna do okay out there, but with the knee injury, the knee concerns. Makes me a little more leery about him. I don't know. I think I might have rather taken him. At the very end of the second round, maybe early third round. I mean, it's it's not a huge difference, but at the same time, uh, Forte. I think you missed. I think you should have taken AP. To be honest with you, I like Roddy White too, but um, I think AP would have been a better choice for you. Could I couldn't go to injury prone backs and to give everybody an update? Uh, Trent Richardson at eight, Hakeem Nix, Brian Matthews at ten in the second round. That's as far as he has dropped. Cam Newton doesn't make it out of the second round at 11 and 12. Marshawn Lynch, Victor Cruz takes the first pick in the third round. I don't like the end of the second round very much. I think that's way too soon for Matthews, too soon for Cam. Marshawn, eh, maybe that one's okay. I'm not a huge Marshawn fan, but... You don't like Beast Mode? You're all about Beast Mode, Nate? I thought you were. <laughs> I... I... I don't know that he could get beast mode anymore. I just don't. I don't know something about that guy. He changes his mind like a woman. Tomorrow you'll ask him. He'll be like, you know, I always told you I like Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> you know, my nickname in bed was was beast mode, right? <laughs> really? That's what your boyfriend called you? <laughs> uh, John no. All right. So <laughs> I'm stuck now. I've, I've I've drafted two wide receivers. I have Calvin Johnson. I, let me tell you, I don't ever want the fourth pick ever again. So I got to draft a running back here. And uh, it's really come down to Jamal Charles. And I don't know if I really – or Steven Jackson, to be honest with you. Those are the two guys that are going through my head in the third round. Uh, beginning, beginning of the third round, I think I'm going to have to go with Charles, even though I do not like Charles at all this year. I'm getting made fun of in the chat room about my computer failing. I've, i I got to tell you, man, this Commodore 64, they said it lasts forever, but I think it's about to go out. Your computer fails as much as your fantasy. It's terrible. Oh, that was a good one, Nate. Really? That's that's <laughs> Nate. What what spot in this draft are you taking? So by the way, I think I like Jamal Charles in that pick as well. He's looked okay so far. I think you're. Yeah, I think you got no problems with him. I don't like him though. I don't want to take him there. I'm almost. I, I'm forced I, to. I, huh? I can I can understand that. I would be nervous too. I don't like taking injury prone guys or get guys that are coming off of an injury, things like that. But uh, you you need a guy. You need a good back there. I think he has the ability to be that good back for you. I got no problem with him in the third round. You just picked up a f- former first-round running back. Even, even last season, he was a first-round running back. He drops to the third round. By the way, just in case you guys don't know, it's Victor Cruz in the third round, Brandon Marshall, Greg Jennings, Jamal Charles, and A.J. Green all in the third round. I'm okay with Jamal Charles. You just picked up a first-round running back in the third round. Why are you all like, I don't know? Well, I, I have to make sure I handcuff myself with Peyton Hillis. Like that's the big. You probably won't because now it's a guessing game because you know how much I like him and you kind of have an idea of where I'm targeting him. The question is with Peyton Hillis, are are you willing to take him earlier to beat me to him? Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to reach for him because you know what? If I don't, yeah, think about it. You're going to a, if you let's say I make the playoffs in my in my league, I, I gotta go in there knowing that I need to win. 
and you don't win with guys on your bench, I got to make sure that I cover myself at all angles. So I got to take Hills in case Charles doesn't perform this year. I have to. I have to maybe reach two rounds early to grab him. And, and you're going to have to because you know that's who I want. Yep. Well, I don't blame you. And it might, you know, it might come back to hurt me anyways. Maybe Charles stays healthy. Me and you are in agreement. Hillis could be this year's Mike Tolbert. He could be that red zone threat that, you know, without touchdowns, you're really nothing. Well, I'm disappointed because I, uh, I was targeting Julio Jones with this pick. I thought he might fall to me. He goes three picks ahead after A.J. Green is Fred Jackson, Julio Jones at the seventh pick in the third round, Steven Jackson, another guy I like, Jordy Nelson with the ninth. Jim in the chat room was asking if Julio Jones was there, and I was like, shh, that's my boy, man. Don't, don't, don't be draft blocking me on this. <laughs> I, can't, I can't figure out why so many people are so high on him this year. I can, because that, that's going to be an awesome offense. You have a great run game. You have Roddy White, and you have Julio Jones. Those guys are going to be great. With no Roddy White, I would agree with you 100%. But with Roddy White there, I don't know how many looks Jones is going to get. Well, everybody I wanted went in this round. Michael Turner goes 10th. Mike Wallace goes 11th. Not Mike Wallace. Uh, I'm looking up and down the list. There's not... Uh, I'll be honest. I'm not very comfortable with... Uh, let's take a look at running backs because I think I'm probably going to need to steal one. This is a big round. Uh, you know what? With my uh, last pick in the third round, I'm going Frank Gore. I like that pick. That's a good I'm move. not going to argue with you on that one. And now I'm going Peyton Hillis with my no. <laughs> I'm gonna beat you to a USOB. No. Uh I don't think there's another running back on this list at this point that I'm really feel comfortable kinda of chasing at this point. So I may just go back over and take a look at the wide receivers. And the third what are we now in the beginning of the fourth round? Oh my god. Really? Wes Welker? I just I just guys. How in a 12-team league did I just draft Wes Welker at the beginning of the fourth round? He didn't score touchdowns. Well, and Brandon Lloyd's there. I don't, that's yeah. how he did it. And Brandon Lloyd's your boy. Yep. That's okay. I'm taking I'm taking Wes Welker. I, I'll say this. Wel- Welker in the fourth round, regardless, is um, that's, a, that's a good pick. That's, that's a good steal. Pick. It's, it's a steal. It's, it's, it's a half steal. How do you have still? <laughs> it's not like this mind-boggling, blow, your, blow, the, blow the doors off of it kind of pick. It's a good move. It's good. Uh, but Jim, well, numbers will drop this year. Nate, uh, Jim in the chat room just asked, uh, is this a PPR mock draft? And I said, it is now. Oh, <laughs> it is. That's a steal. It's that's now. a steal, man. <laughs> that's just a reminder for everyone. Don't let Dennis be the commission of your league because he will just tweak it however he needs for himself. <laughs> but. That's right. The rules will change as I go. Like, if someone else takes, like, uh, Darren Sproles later, I'll be like, nope, no longer PPR league. Only for me. <laughs> oh, jeez. I mean, you guys will agree. I mean, Wes Welker's been going a lot of mouth drafts in the second round. That's too early for him. I think he should go about the third round. So I think you got, I think you got about a round steal worth of value. Do well, you guys agree with me? Hang on now. Uh, let's look at some of the wide receivers that went. Mike Wallace over Wes Welker, stupid, right? Uh, it's a, yeah, I can, I'll give you that one. Jordy Nelson is a push. I would say Welker's better than Nelson. Julio- uh, no, I'll call it a push. Julio Jones? I'd take Welker. I'll take Julio. I'd take Welker. Uh, A.J. Green? I'd take Green. Green. Push. Greg Jennings? Jennings. 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 So, and Jennings went in the third pick in the second round. Or third pick in the third round. So yeah, I, I think I kind of did get a nice little low, nice little snag there with Welker going first in the fourth round. Steve Smith, Marquise Colston, uh, Thomas, and Darren Sproles. That's where we are right now. We're looking at the sixth pick in the fourth round. And there's there's still a plethora of wide receivers left as well. Definitely, uh, I think I'm going to look at a quarterback this round. I, I might look. There's still a bunch. Listen, here we are in the fourth round. Mike Vick, who has a hand injury, is still left. Eli Manning, who threw for almost 5,000 yards, is still left. Uh, Peyton Manning, Tony Romo, uh, Philip Rivers, who was a second-round quarterback over the last couple of years, is still left. Jay Cutler, I think, will be improved, is still left. Matt Ryan could have a good year. So I think I think quarterbacks are, are very much a plethora here in the fourth round. Yeah, and you know what? Like I said, I don't want to want this fourth pick ever again. 
I have Calvin Johnson, Keem Nix, Jamal Charles. I actually really want to draft another wire, finish off a wide receivers right now. I want Des Bryant, but he just left. I think I'm forced myself to take a quarterback right now, and I'm not sure which one I'm going to take. We're going to see what happens. Well, we got a caller. Let's see how this one goes. Because last week we had a caller, or was it two weeks ago at this late, and uh, it was a very interesting caller. So let's just see how this one goes. Caller. Hello? Yay, what's going on? Hey, I want to tell you about my little story about my fantasy. Okay. Wait, wait, football or sexual? Football, football. Okay. I once strapped my cock into my ass. Ah, yes. Late night calls. Woo! Ah, yes. That's. I knew that was coming. We'll have to. Was that pun in, pun intended there, Dennis? Ah, dear gosh. <laughs> By the way, let's get back to this thing because you know some people. Uh, Des Bryant at the sixth, seventh. Ahmed Bradshaw, Michael Vick goes nine. Oh, was, that, was that Chad Johnson that just called? No, no, not at all. Nate. Seven. <laughs> Where did that one come from, Nate? Uh, he was, I was looking at the list of injuries and stuff, and he was at the top of the list. Uh, Austin Miles goes with the tenth pick. Uh, you know what? Here's here's the problem. Now we're 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 about to hit the fifth round. I feel a run on quarterbacks coming, and if that run hits, I'm screwed. You know that you you look at who has quarterbacks at this point. Any one of Eli Peyton Romo uh, Rivers. I'm 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 kind of I'm I'm at the mercy of everybody else in this round at this point. Did yeah, you might pick it up. You might be you no, you you'll be stuck with if, if the run happens, you actually might be stuck between Matt Ryan and RG3 and that's not two guys you want to be starting for your team. That's horrible. Yeah. Well, it could be. Cuz you're Well, you've only seen what Vic gone so far? Yes. There's still a bunch of guys. I think you're going to be fine. But yeah, that's that could be your worst nightmare. By the way, finishing up the uh, fourth round was Michael Vick, Austin Miles at 10, Doug Martin at 11, Jeremy Macklin at 12. And the beginning of the fifth round is Percy Harvin, Dwayne Bowe, who is hold now, Eli Manning, who goes. There goes another guy off my I wish I could have list. Should I? Should I draft another quarterback right now just, just to start this run? You probably should go after your <laughs> ink up right now. <laughs> nah, he can wait. If you really want to take him. I already need another running back. I only have one starting running back. I'm probably going to take Jermichael Finley right here. There's no one else on this list that really... I... You, you know what? I'll let you have Brandon Lloyd. I'll let, I'll let Brandon Lloyd fall to you. I don't think he will. I I bet you five bucks Brandon Lloyd does not fall to me. That's too much money for me. It's, it's like a day's paycheck for me. Let's see here. By the way, you did take Jermichael Finley, so we're going to wait for the next pick. I'm going to... It's still so far away. There's, let's see here, two, four, six, seven picks until mine. Uh, collusion. Thanks. The chat room. <laughs> I was waiting for that call. <laughs> Brandon, Brandon Lloyd goes to pick right after you, John. Yep, I try to start some interest for him. That's what I'm doing. I'm not really on your side. Just I, trying to shake things up. I can tell. Um, I kind of scoot over to my team. I've got McFadden and Gore, Roddy White and Wes Welker, my four picks. Wow. That's a pretty solid lineup right there. You know who you you're playing up with Phil uh Philip Rivers, which you know what it really isn't a bad pick. Not not <laughs> late in the draft. There are a lot of surprises, by the way. You know, you look at wide receiver, this, there's some still some big name wide receivers still out there. I'm I'm looking at either a wide receiver or a running back this round. I may hold off one more round on my quarterback, I think. <laughs> really? That's, that's I, a little too that's a little too ballsy for me. You know, yeah, he's gonna see he's gonna push it off and push it off and then really he's gonna have to take Gerard. No, he's taking Matt Ryan. You know how much Dennis loves Matt Ryan, which is is all yours, Dennis. Thank you. By the way, uh finishing up this Brandon Lloyd at five, Antonio Brown at six, Aaron Hernandez at seven, Eric Decker, and Reggie Bush at number nine. No complaints? No. I'm with you guys. I'm looking up and down the list. I'm kind of seeing, you know what? I, I am going a wide receiver with my next pick for sure. I, I think I need a wide receiver here to to go with my my wide receiver tandem. Phillip Rivers is now off the board at number 10. Which is, you know what, if you get, well, 
Where are you? You got one, two. You have one pick to go. You got to hope Tony Romo falls for you, and he does. That's a great pick to grab Romo right here. Romo's, Romo's better than Rivers, fantasy-wise. Yes, I'll agree there. I think Romo is better than Rivers, fantasy-wise. I can't stand Rivers. I take Vincent Jackson with the first pick. I like that. And let's see here. Ah, you, I'm looking at running back. Running back is starting to get a little thin here. Uh, what what round are we in right now? Sixth. We're in the sixth round. Running back's getting a little thin. I've got to. Uh, you know what? I'm uh. Give me Vernon Davis with my second pick. First pick in the sixth round, Vernon Davis. In retrospect, you know what? I went and took Finley in a round before, and you got Davis, pretty much the same player. You you, you outdrafted me right there, Dennis. I I, I did what? You outdrafted me. Thank you. You're welcome. I, you know, I'm I'm looking here, and I I everybody knows I'm hurting for a quarterback at this point on the show. Uh, you know, people are thinking next round. This is a year you have to have a big play quarterback to win. But listen, here we are in the sixth round. Tony Romo is still left, who is is good, is a great quarterback. Jay Cutler is going to have a bounce back year. Uh, you know. There are several other guys that I would feel okay with taking at this point. There's only three guys left that I, I would look at as, as a starting, as a fantasy championship caliber quarterback. Here we are in the sixth round. Tony Romo could be if he can stay healthy. Jay Cutler, he's not injury prone. He had one one bad year. I would take Jay Cutler. I'd be comfortable. Matt Ryan is still left. You know, if Schaub can stay healthy, look at what he has around him. So there are, there are three or four decent quarterbacks still left. Let's be realistic, Dennis. I'm not going to take him. Just tell me. Who are you targeting? It's Matt Ryan. I won't lie. I think we all know. You know what? Once, you know, we've said this on a million shows. Once the holy tr- trinity of quarterbacks goes, is there really a whole lot of difference from, let's say, seven overall quarterback to, you know, the 12th spot? I don't think so. I disagree with you. I think you got guys like Vic and Manning who have huge numbers. Mm-hmm. Really? Who, yeah. I think Vic and Manning could be, a, you know, put the same numbers as, I'm going to say it, as Brady. Time out, time out. We're talking talk Eli, right? Because I've, I've got Eli at about seven overall on my quarterbacks. Let's let's say from eight on, Tony Romo, Michael Vick, too injury prone. You cannot lump him in the list with Brady and all them. He has a potential, but he's not going to stay healthy. Uh, Roethlisberger, I don't want. Paint Manning to question mark. And then Matt Ryan, Schaub and Cutler at 14. There's not much difference from from 8 to, to 14. You can, almost throw, you can almost throw Tony Romo in that same group. What do you mean? I right? too low for Vick. I understand there's injury concerns with Vic and all that, but I think he's going to have to finish a lot higher than that this year. Really? Because he's already hurt with a bad fan he's now. He's fine. Yeah, the odds are. The odds are here you guys injury out of the way. He's going to be fine for the rest of the year. Really? Because he hasn't taken a hit to his ribs yet. That's a <laughs> horrible argument. That's just, By the way, before we continue this verbal slap fight, you've got Vernon Davis, Deshaun Jackson, uh, Stevie Johnson at three, Willis McGahee at four, Darius Haywood. Bay in the sixth round, fifth pick, and Bajarvis Green Ellis, which I like. You like Ellis there? I I think Ellis in the kind of the middle to the end of the sixth round. Yes. Well, the, who else is out there running backs right now that's available? Well, let me tell you guys, I got a draft one right now. I'm going to put up to you guys. I mean, would you rather have Ellis or I think I'm leaning towards Isaac Redmond right now? I think Isaac Redmond's going to be my running back too. Well, you have D'Angelo Williams who could still. Squeak out 800 yards because he had 836 and seven touchdowns in that backfield last season. I think he could still do that again. You've got uh, David Wilson. I still think it's a little too early. Uh, you know what? If you can, if you say you can trust Beanie Wells a little bit, who still had a thousand yards and ten touchdowns, to be all right, maybe. But no, uh, you know what? Isaac Redman. You know, maybe. Peyton Hillis, if this is about the time you're going to have to start to worry, because one of these rounds I will pluck him. Don't worry, I've already, I've already planned it out. I am taking Isaac Redman. I mean, I am taking Peyton Hillis in the seventh round. Oh, well, that's a good pick, because six was Bajarvis Green Ellis in the sixth round. Reggie Wayne in the seventh seventh pick. Eighth pick, Pierre Gerson. And then you did take Isaac Redman with the ninth. Not bad. I like yeah. Redman there. I think that's the best choice there. I think a guy I like, and I don't like Beanie Wells this year. You mentioned Beanie Wells. The guy I like... 
later on in the draft. I think you can get him going through in the later rounds is uh, Ryan Williams. Javid Best goes. Why? Well, no. let me ask you guys this. Do you believe that Javid Best will step foot on the field this season? I bet my kid gets more carries than Javid Best. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Three of them. Well, <laughs> the only one that plays football. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing with with everything that's going around the NFL right now with concussions, and uh, you know, with it's becoming a big lawsuit and everything. And with best showing that he's what he's had two concussions so far in his career. Is that how many he's had? I, I believe it's two. The, two in the NFL, so, but I'm not playing college. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so point is, I mean, they're not going to rush him back. The NFL is going to take every precaution with him. I'm with you, Dennis. He comes back week twelve, week thirteen. Yeah, that's still too early for someone like that. By the way, after Javid Best in that controversial draft pick goes Kenny Britt, even even more of a question mark. Yeah, that's a uh, that's another gutsy call there. I don't know that I agree with it. In the end of a sixth round, do you want Kenny Britt, John? No, it's, it's a it's a high risk, high reward guy, but it's the risk is too high to equivalent the reward. There's there's guys like McFadden who I agree with you. I mean, with his injury concerns, is worth it in the first or second round. Britt's McFadden's just injury. Britt's got something upstairs he needs to work on, and then he's dealing with two bum knees. Well, Tony Romo finally goes with the twelfth pick in the set in the uh, sixth round. Seventh was Fred Davis, and then Jonathan Stewart. Do- Jonathan Stewart goes before D'Angelo Williams. You know, I don't like any of the backs in Carolina, unless his, unless their last name is Newton. <laughs> I'm even like him. <laughs> Uh, Anquan Bolden goes after Jonathan Stewart. Do I do I draft Matt Ryan here? I let Dennis draft Peyton Hillis. So we'll make a trade. There's no trades in mock drafts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm at the draft Peyton Hillis here. I I really have no choice. I I agree because I was going to take him in the eighth round. Yeah, I had to. When you own you got fans, Stewart sometimes needs to stop worrying about. You know, get the best talent and and learn how to play smart. You grab a Charles, you grab a Mal Bradshaw, you grab a Darren McFadden, or even a Peterson. Make sure you grab their backup. It will save you a huge headache at the end of the season. Now I have my whole starting lineup pretty much filled out. I don't have a quarterback. I don't have a kicker or a defense, which I won't take them until the last pick. Which guys, stop taking them early. Now I, I have an interesting dilemma. I don't think Matt Ryan will. Uh, continue to fall that much farther. So I feel like I have to take him now. I, this is the round I have to take him with one of my next two picks. Matt Ryan will not see out of the eighth round. Do you guys agree? Absolutely agree. But I don't think he's, I don't think he's the quarterback you have to take right now. I kind of think he is. I mean, I like Matt Ryan over Jay Cutler. I don't. Okay. I call it a push. With Brandon Marshall back there, it's, it's going to be hard to... You know, we saw what Cutler did when, Mar- when Marshall was with the when they were in uh, Denver. So Ryan's a, a, a nine points a week guy. That's what he gives you. Yeah, but you know what? You just you just gave me a quarterback that that Jay Cutler goes off the board. By the way, and uh, Jacob Tammy, Robert Meacham, and Torrey Smith all go while we all were slap fighting. Matt Ryan's got to go. He's 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 my guy. You know what? I'm taking Matt Ryan. I'm. I have to. That's my quarterback, and I'm okay with taking my starting quarterback at the, what was it, the, what are we at now? Round now? Round eight. Round, are we in round, yeah, round eight now. We're round eight. So, round eight, I did that. Now, time to start looking at depth. If I were you, you just you just hit on it. You start you need to look at depth. I would draft two quarterbacks. I would draft. I would. I'd be honest with you. I draft RG three here if I were you. I would maybe draft. No, uh, not no. I, I wouldn't do that. No, not a chance. I, I, I would rather have. You know what? I'm going to reach. Nice I, job. It's okay to reach, right? But in round nine, yes. You're you're getting to the point where you kind of start reaching. This is where a lot of guys that that do a bunch of research and have people that they really like, like their sleepers. This is where they start targeting him and take risks on him. I'm okay with it. Round eight, they took Lance Moore. I thought you should take a match up. I don't want match up. But Are you we... want Lance Moore? I like Lance Moore a lot. I really think Lance Moore can put up 
exactly the same numbers as Colston this season. I've said this before. I, I, hey, listen, I, I'm. Why, why couldn't he? Because he's not Marcus Colston. I think he puts up Robert Meacham numbers. Yeah, I kind of agree with he that. Take, one. He takes Meacham's spot. That's what he does. So he puts up Meacham numbers. He, or, hey, hang on. He takes Meacham's spot while still taking in Lance Moore numbers. Says so, who? So. That's they didn't bring in anybody else. Listen. Lance Moore still had, even in that crowded uh, New Orleans passing game in 2011, 627 yards and eight touchdowns. You get rid of Meacham, you can easily add another 100 to 200 yards and easily two touchdowns to that. And I don't think I'm being wacky with those predictions, am I? Like, oh my gosh, he can, listen, you get rid of Meacham, Lance Moore could easily get maybe even 150 and two touchdowns. I still would take that. I, I, I agree. Not, I'm not against you making the move here. I think it's an okay. It's an okay. It's not even that big of a reach. I don't think. But I don't know that he's going to put up the numbers that you're thinking. I yeah, he's not put up Colston numbers. He's not going to put up a thousand yards and ten touchdowns. You think? I think he's going to put up good numbers for a ninth round pick. But I don't think he's going to put up like these huge like oh ends up being a steal a draft kind of a pick. You know what I mean? Listen, I, I'll tell you this: guys who have went before him, and and I will compare. Darius Hayward Bay, I'd rather have Lance Moore. Eric Decker, I'd rather have Lance Moore. Reggie, no. I'd rather have. We'll go back to that. Hang on. Reggie, <laughs> I'd rather have Lance Moore. Anquan Bolden, I'd rather have Lance Moore. You know, and, and that's just. Uh, Santonio Holmes went before him, and I'd rather have Lance Moore. But you can't compare yourself to other teams. The only, the only team you compare. You need to look yourself in the mirror, Dennis, in the morning. You got to say. You have to say to yourself, "Am I okay starting Lance Moore?" Yes, I would be too. But I don't think he's. Gonna, I don't think he's gonna put the numbers you think he's putting up, though. I don't think he's Marcus Colson. He's not putting up Marcus Colson numbers. There's a lot of weapons there, and you know, even what he's gonna put up is, isn't gonna be bad numbers. I would start him myself. I just think you're reaching a little bit too high to think what he's gonna be put up. What what you, what would be your predictions then? Seven hundred to eight hundred yards receiving, eight touchdowns, which I'd be very happy with. But it's not That's Marcus Colson I numbers. I, I but I, I I agree with you. But it's I not can't... Marcus Colson numbers. I gave him two more touchdowns. Yes, yes, you did. And that's 12 points. That's 12 uh, points that you need when I beat you in week six mock draft leagues. By the way, Colston, he, he had 1,100 yards last season, and he also had eight touchdowns. Yep, not denying it. That's still not that's still not as good as uh, Moore. Yeah, you know what? I mean, Moore's not as good as him. I, I'll take the touchdowns over yards any day. Yeah, okay. we're, we're just kind of going back and forth here. It's, it was an okay pick there. It's not like going to blow anybody out of the water. It was a good pick. But by, by the way, Nate, sorry to cut you off. Round eight was Lance Moore by me, Matt Schaub, RG three, uh, Sean Green, Stephen Ridley, Malcolm Floyd, CJ Spiller, and Roy Helu. Oh, I want to like Helu so much. I really do. Would you now, Nate? You can owe him or did in a keeper league that probably isn't going to get off the ground this year. Um, Thanks. Would you? I, I, it's it's a dead league. We'll go over that later. But uh, it, it, at this point in a keeper league, are you kind of like ready to wash your hands of him? In a keeper league, no, no, not in a keeper league. Okay. I, I, as far as as a standard draft league, no, you know. A PPR or standard league, whatever you want to call it, but a one year league, I'm a little less. I'm, I'm a little more leery about taking him in those leagues. I, I he will do well. I think he will. He's got the talent. He's got the ability. It just seems like that Washington doesn't know how to utilize any of their backs. So I don't know. Okay, I got. I, I'm with you. I mean, it's such a crowded backfield and. And it's a topsy-turvy situation. D'Angelo Williams, which is a steal in round eight, by the way. I totally believe that goes with the ninth pick. The first defense off the board is San Francisco. In what round? Eighth. There's no hun about it. There's no reason why any defense should go before the last two rounds. Nate, I kind of, or not Nate, but the John, I think we both just got out drafted here because in the eighth round, the 12th pick, or the 11th pick was Tony Gonzalez, who was the fourth best fantasy tight end last season. Better pick than Vernon Davis. 
statistically, uh, at least last season, sure. This season, that's a different team. I'm not sure. I think Tony Gonzalez will put up consistent numbers about what he kind of put up last season. But I think I think Davis is due for a breakout, and I'm okay with taking him where I did. Yeah, I agree with you. I didn't. I didn't need. I'd rather have Finley to be honest with you. I, I didn't need a wide receiver. I mean, I'm dying right now for running back depth. I still I still haven't drafted my third wide receiver yet. Which makes wow. It, yeah, it puts me in big trouble. Huge trouble. Yep. Stuck between like Justin Blackman and Sidney Rice. I'm okay with I'm okay with who I took at running back. You know, Frank Gore. I got him early enough where I was happy with that. You know, I'm looking up and down the the list of available players and wide receivers and running backs, and I still think there's a couple a couple guys that can help teams win. I'm not denying that. I just did a I did a thank God this was a mock draft. <laughs> that's all. That's all I'm gonna say is I don't I don't want the fourth. I, I decided to take the fourth pick to see what would happen when you took the fourth pick when what normally goes as the Ryan Matthews pick or the Maurice Jones-Drew pick to see what those guys would be stuck with. It's the worst pick of the draft. Tony Gonzalez, by the way, was pancaked in this draft in the eighth round between San Francisco and Pittsburgh defense. Mason Crosby in the ninth round. Before <laughs> Randy Moss, Sidney Rice, and Donald Brown, which I like Donald Brown that late. That late, yeah. I'm okay with that. I think that's a good pick because it, it's – it's not as a big of a risk there. You get a guy in the ninth, tenth round that doesn't pan out. That doesn't pan out. Or if he does great, then it's like, oh, look, it's a steal. Every every mock draft every year at the ninth round, someone takes a defense or a kicker, and it's still a head scratcher. I just don't get it. I really don't. And if they're taking defenses, why aren't they taking the Lions defense? That's why, Nate. <laughs> just the fact that you had to ask is your answer. <laughs> And that's why Nate's not drafting tonight. Oh. He, he he got a concussion, has to sit this one out. <laughs> well, we've got, here we go, a little update, by the way. We're in the ninth. I kind of gave you the rundown on the ninth. We're waiting for someone who is picking now to take their time and pick. I hope they take a defense. <laughs> why not? I mean, everybody else has, right? Here comes the wrong defense, I guess, the ninth round. Looks like I'm stuck with the, uh, I don't know who, who am I stuck with? Wow. Wow. Handcuff in the ninth. What do you think about this pick? The Rodgers pick? Yes. Jacuzzi Rodgers. I like him. Not that early, though. Mm, okay, maybe not that. Was that ninth round? Ninth round. Mm. It's better than taking a defense. Rogers, J- Jacuzzi Rogers goes before Michael Bush, goes before Beanie Wells, David Wilson, Mark Ingram, Pierre Thomas, Ben Tate. I like Ben Tate way better. Tim Hightower. Uh, no, I don't like that at all. Oh, it's a borderline. There's a lot of starting running backs left. Um, Rogers is. We've already talked about before. Rogers will be used a lot. Was supposedly supposed to be utilized a lot more this year on the backfield. He's going to be down in the third down back, but. I don't hate as much as you do, Dennis. I, I don't think it's a great pick because there's other starting, starting running backs out there that are better, but it's not awful. This is a freaking goofy ninth round. Mason Crosby, Baltimore, Randy Moss, Sidney Rice, Donald Brown, Jacuzzi Rogers, Chicago defense, Michael Bush, Ben Tate, David Wilson, who I do like, and that was going to be my next pick. I, I like Bush that round. You, you know what? I'm... I, I guess I'm going to keep the craziness going. I'm, yes. keep, I, I'm taking uh, Ryan Williams. Oh, I was taking him too myself. That was my pick this round. I was think he, that's a great pick. That is a great pick. I love it absolutely Ryan is. Here. I think you guys, I'm going to be very careful with him. I think he's going to come out and be very productive. I think he's going to beat out Beanie Wells. He absolutely is. He's, he's, in, he's actually in a, uh, a better place for now than Wells is in terms of his recovery. You know what? Why not? Why not? Here we are, the beginning of the tenth round. Look, Air Blunt. There's crickets right here. That's crickets. <laughs> there really is. What other backs were out there? Really? I mean, you're, you're B.D. Wells, Mike, Mikel Lasher, Mark Ingram, Pierre Thomas, James Starks, uh, Rodney Hillman, Tim Hightower, Mike Tolbert, Pierre, or uh, Toby Gerhardt. 
uh, Felix Jones. I'm okay. I'm with- okay with Blunt. I'm okay with Blunt. See what else out there? I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's not bad. I'm not okay with Blunt. Well, you're also the guy that told me Blunt was useless in fantasy football, and here he is not not giving up just yet that first round pick. I get him in the tenth round. I'm okay with that. I think I think your hate has gone too far where you will look past a great value. There's no value in Blunt. Let me be oh, blunt. Oh, don't say I, that. Let me be blunt. There's right. no value in blunt. I think you're still in the draft. Add ton puns on this one. Oh. <laughs> what, what do you like about blunt? The preseason. Uh, I like the fact that you know everybody else hates him. Blunt is a guy that went in the fifth or sixth round last season that everybody hates so much that blunt is a poor man's. Um, he's a. Poor man's Frank Gore, where Frank Gore was a first-round running back, has dropped. Where did I get Frank Gore? In, like, the fourth round? I thought it was the fifth, but, yeah, something like that. You know, the hate on some of these guys have gone too far. That pe- People are listening to experts so much so, and apparently your hate with them has gone, is, is just crazy hatred. Like, yep, I do, I do hate them. Like, to the get- racism. <laughs> There's no, nothing racist about them. You know, you know what color I see? Red, as in red zone. That's the only color I see when I'm watching a fantasy football player. The guy can't pass block, all right? He can't, he can't pass block at all. And what team last year led the league in red zone passing attempts? That would be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They added Vincent Jackson this year, which is going to secure the right that the fact they're going to be throwing more. They brought in Dallas Clark. They brought in a guy like Doug Martin, who can catch the ball in the backfield. Blunt's going to have very little value this year. So he's all uh, yours. I disagree. I, here's the thing. They were atrocious last year, let's be honest. They've got to mix it up a little bit. And I think Blunt will be better this year. I think that whole team will be better this year compared to last year. I like Freeman. I like Blunt. I like Dallas Clark. I like Vincent Jackson. I like a lot of Tampa Bay guys. And I think you're okay with Blunt, especially in this round. John? One oh. more. I'll give you one more second to uh, to come back with that because I, I, then I'm moving on. You can't come back with it. You're done. Week four, waiver wire fodder. That's what he's going to be. I'll be looking at him at the waiver wire. Uh, I disagree. Really? Because, uh, no, you're, you you have no clue on this one. I think you're totally wrong because here you are. All, oh, Blunt is going to be released. Blunt's horrible, blah, 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 blah. Here he is taking first-team reps. You know who else took first-team reps last year? Lance Kendricks. How did he do? This isn't last year. How about Jacoby Jones? How many times we've seen guys in the preseason? That's why I love drafting in the preseason. You shouldn't. I'm gonna tell you right now. Don't watch a single preseason game because it means absolutely nothing and affects your drafts more than it should. I bet you my mock te- my mock draft team is better than yours at this point. Um, <laughs> me and you, me and you are playing Madden after this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put put our players on a team and we're gonna go at it. You know what? We're gonna let Nate since Nate isn't mock drafting here. I'm gonna read off my starting. My starters and my pitch. We'll go back through. We'll get. We'll run everybody up to speed at who's been taken where and what round. And then, well, first off, I can tell you, neither one of you can buy my vote either. You don't have that kind of cash. I'm not trying. Okay. okay. My quarterbacks: Matt Ryan, Roddy White, Wes Welker, Vincent Jackson, Darren McFadden, Frank Gore, Vernon Davis is my starters. Uh, Lance Moore, Ryan Williams, and Legarrette Blunt's on my bench. John, it's not fair. My team's horrendous. I know. <laughs> I know. That's that's the point I'm making. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll do mine. My quarterback's Michael Vick. My two my three wide receivers are um, Keem Nix, Calvin Johnson, Sidney Rice. My running backs are Jamal Charles, Isaac Remen. My tight end, Jermichael Finley. My bench is Peyton Hillis, D'Angelo Williams, Andrew Luck is my backup quarterback, and Mike Williams is, I guess, my wide receiver. I hate my running backs. I don't hate your running backs. I like Jamal Charles. Who is your other running back? Isaac Redman. Isaac Redman. I think those are pretty decent. I think here's the thing. I think Dennis has a better bench right now. Uh, but as far as the starters go, I think I give John the slight edge. I do like Vic more than Ryan. I think you've got some stud receivers. I think Jamal Charles is going to surprise a lot of people this year and be a very good back. <sighs> your tight ends are pushed me. I, I there's. So much that you've just said there that's wrong. Before I chastise Nathan Tucker here, I do want to say round 10 was LeGarrette Blunt, Janikowski, Devery Henderson, Nate Washington, Demarius Moore, David Akers, Michael Crabtree, B.D. Wells, Andrew Luck, Dan Bailey, uh, 
God almighty, the kickers. You guys are crazy here. Uh, Gron- uh, was a Gronkowski for New England, a Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, wow, mighty. It's my picks, by the way. I'll, I'll finish up. Let me pick and, and dominate my bench, apparently, still. I, how, how do I have a bench? Nuts, by the way. <laughs> you know what? As I'm, I'm looking at wide receivers, because I think I need to steal another wide receiver here. Uh, there's a lot of good names. You, you know what? I'm going to take take a guy that everybody – he's a rookie. I'm passing up on a lot of decent names here, I think, to, to, to pick up this rookie, and I'm definitely reaching for him. But I, I like what I saw in the preseason. We're in the 11th round here. But give me Stephen Hill. They, they, they have talked about him being a mini Calvin Johnson. They were looking for him early and often in their preseason game. I think he has a lot of upside. This is remember I was saying earlier I don't care two bits about the preseason I don't watch a single game it affects people's fantasy lives way too much and it comes back to bite you. I'm okay with Stephen Hill because I think he emerges the number two wide receiver and he gets plenty of playing time and that by itself is what makes him valuable. I think it's a great pick on your part. And another guy I'm going after is a guy I believe is a sleeper, my big sleeper this season, and definitely a reach. I could I could probably wait two rounds and snag this guy, but it's my bench. And I'm and I'm want to get my guys on my bench. I'm going Eddie Royal. Eddie Royal, huh? <laughs> I really think Eddie Royal in San Diego. Listen, Eddie Royal had a, an amazing rookie season three years ago. He had like a thousand yards, ten touchdowns, something crazy like that. And I know everybody's listening, going, "Oh my God, this guy's an idiot." But you put Eddie Royal on a team with Philip Rivers, a, a team that's now trying to find their identity, who Gates is still the only one left, who just, they just lost Ryan Matthews. I really think, I think Eddie Royal could have a big year this season. I'm with Nate. Eddie Royal, huh? Really? You, you guys I, have zero love for Eddie Royal. I can't stand Philip Rivers. I don't, that quarterback has lost his passion for this game. He I, he does not look like a good quarterback to me. He put up pretty good numbers last year, decent numbers. But I, that team, like you said, they're they're on a, like a whole reset. They're trying to find out who they are. And I don't think that's the kind of team I want to have players on my. I don't I just don't want those kind of guys. I, I want I want I want people that well, I, they know their role. They know how to do it. Nobody seems to know what's going on out there. It seems like, and now with Ryan Matthews going down, who I didn't like anyway, but that's going to put them in more of an influx. San Diego is a team, like we said, that is trying to find their identities. You put a guy like Eddie Royal, who had one breakout season, and so for whatever the reason with Jay Cutler, got lost in the mix. You put him where Phillip Rivers, you take away last year, was an elite quarterback. Last year, he showed signs of being human. Now, can he bounce back? Probably. Is is, is he going to bounce back? There's a great chance. Could he regress and stay the same? Sure. Nobody truly knows. But I like the fact that Eddie Royal is on this team. I think he has a chance to reset who he is and and step out. And I think Eddie Royal has a great chance of being a fantasy wide receiver that at, may not even be drafted in some leagues. You could pick up off the waiver wire, and he can help you win. Okay, and now that's the thing. I think he could be picked up off the waiver wire. And I understand that you'd like that he went to San Diego. But the thing with Rivers isn't that he had a down year last year. He quit. He quit on that team last year. He got halfway through the season and just basically mailed it in the rest of the way. That's, that, that to me seems like a guy that is – he needs to get his head on straight. And maybe he will. Okay, there's a chance. But that to me is a bad sign, and I don't like it one bit. Well, here, here's the thing, Dennis. And I was – a couple weeks ago I was sitting there going, do I, I was right there with you. Eddie Royal was going to be one of my sleeper picks as well. But if you look at the past, what Philip Rivers has done in San Diego with his number two, number three wide receivers, they've always fallen short. Malcolm Floyd's best, the best days that Malcolm Floyd's ever put up was when Vincent Jackson was injured. Once Vincent Jackson was healthy again, Malcolm Floyd pretty much disappeared off the face of, of the fantasy planet. So with the, the, the point is you can't trust the number two on, on San Diego. You can't trust the number three. It's their one and their tight end, and that's it, and their running back as well. And that's the reason why I'm staying away from Eddie Royal this year. Well, let me catch everybody up to, up to speed where we are. We're, round 11 was Greg Little, Justin Blackman, Owen Daniels, Mike Williams, Tampa Bay, Titus Young, which I do like that pick a lot, Philadelphia, McKellisher, uh, Pierre Thomas, 
uh, Lamont Robinson, James Starks in the 10th pick, Mark Ingram, Stephen Hill, who I took to 12th, Eddie Royal in the 12th, I took him, and I'm okay with it, trying to defend myself. Uh, Santana Moss, Austin Jeffries, you've got uh, Nate Burleson there, uh, Toby Gerhardt, good pick, Carson Palmer, who I like a lot, uh, John Kurt Casey, okay, it's a kicker, why, I don't know. Um, guys with kickers early, I it just it still boggles my mind. Um, but I get back on it. Ronnie Hillman, Austin Colley, Josh Freeman, who I like a lot. Andy Dalton was taken. Tim Hightower, uh, Gresham is gone. Uh, Brent Selleck, Michael Floyd, wow. Uh, Marcellus Bennett, good. Kevin Smith taken. Now this is the thirteenth round, fifth pick. Just in case for you guys who are listening, it's a mock draft for 12-team league standard. We're in the 13th round. You can head over to Facebook where I will uh, post the results so you guys can go over and nitpick and make fun of you know John because I will. By the way, Cody Fleeter and Jared Cook go off the board. We're going to continue our talks here. And the, the run on mid-tier tight ends looks like it has continued. Uh, Gresham, Selleck, you, you've got Jared Cook. And Fleener, I mean, wow, 13th round, mid-tier. These are guys that probably waited too long in getting their backups, right? Maybe, but I like Jerry Cook this year. Why? I think he could be I think he could be effective out there. Block is going to be the guy out there. He's going to need a good, solid tight end, and I think Jared Cook can be that guy. Do you like – here are guys that are left. I like Dallas Clark over Cook. I do not. John, do you want to jump in the show, be involved? Yeah, I'm just waiting until we get to Bennett. You guys you guys go back and forth. I drafted Bennett for a reason so we can talk about him. But keep going with you guys with cooking. No, I just want you to participate in this part of the show, too. Oh, well, no. Yeah. I, like Jerry, oh. I like Jerry Cook better. Okay. Do you like uh, Greg, Ol- or Jerry Cook? Greg Olson or Jerry Cook? Uh, it's close, but I give the Cook slight, uh, I give Cook slight edge. Moiaki. Cook. Push. Ed Dixon. Cook. Still Cook. Okay. Uh, here we are, 13th round. I, I think I'm going to buy into a little hype and take Evan Royster. Really? What, what hype are you reading? Uh, the hype where he's number one on the uh, depth chart for the running backs of Washington Redskins. Yeah, that'll change in about a week. Maybe so, but I'm, <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> That's a, all right. Can I wait? Can I ask you a question? Because I know we've been going down, and since I'm not in this draft, I don't have a running, no, uh, running list of players in front of me here. Has Titus Young been drafted yet? He went two rounds ago. Okay, I heard you go down the list, but I didn't hear you mention his name. I just wanted to make sure. So I was going to say, if he hasn't gone now, I can't figure out why not. Because I think that's a great. He's going to finish ahead of. Um, Nate. He's going to finish ahead of Nate Burleson this year. I think he's a good receiver to get. You can get him, and you can get him in later rounds. Well, Nate, uh, before we continue with that, I am going to back up Frank Gore in the 13th round with a little of Michael James action. I kind of think he's going to end up being the number two running back on this squad. Well, the the best thing about it is because Gore has shown before he gets injured, you got your guy. You don't have to worry. You can breathe easy, Des. (sighs) Yeah, The rest of your team will suck, but you got that under control. Good job. Hey, I've got the best... Best, best bench in this draft, as you told me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, no, I was just comparing the two of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike Tolbert's still out there in the third, 14th round. Now. That that might be a good value pick. I'm not picking Um, I'm looking for kickers and defenses right now. You're, you're really your last two rounds should be kickers and defenses. We really shouldn't be talking about any of the players and Jason Hansen and Denver. Oh, wow. We are in the last two rounds. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I've been well, busy draft. watching draft results to, to, to really know what round we were in. Thank God you told me. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. If you're drafting Mike Tolbert in the last two rounds, it means you messed up somebody, somewhere. I disagree. Mike Tolbert's going to get all the red zone carries. I think Mike Tolbert's a great, great value in the last two rounds. Although well, well, that, that means you drafted a kicker or, or a defense two right. rounds too early. Right, but... You know what? That's one of those picks that make up for it. And to give everybody an idea, Michael James, Mario Manningham, Seattle, Houston, uh, Nugent, uh, Devon Best, Joe Flacco goes this late. Detroit and Denver defense. 
Denver's defense is the best pick of that round. I think it's a great pick. Yep. Yeah, Von Miller there. You draft Denver just for Von Miller. Just for Von Mer- Miller? Yeah, Von Miller. He's that's a beast. Not, yeah, that's what he's not from him. Bailey? Nope, just Von Miller. And the fact that he helped the Peyton Manning's on the field for long enough just to absolutely destroy teams. Ruben Randall and Brian Quick go back-to-back rookies. I like the Quick pick. Yes, I do, I do too. I think this like, that's a nice draft pick. Uh, by the way, for those of you guys listening, head over to iTunes, rate, subscribe, uh, help us move back up the list. You can listen to the great show that I had with uh, Steve Lemmy, who was with Broken Lizards, which starred in the movie uh, Super Troopers, Beer Fest. You know, they're putting out sequels. It's a great two-hour show where we talk fantasy football because he's a huge fantasy football guy. So head over there and check that interview out. He'll be back on in the next coming weeks. He enjoyed the show. I'm not sure why. But uh, he did. Uh, this has got to be a quick. I wish every draft went this quick. Just just over an hour. Yeah. Well, th- thank goodness we're not doing any. Au- Are we doing auction drafts this year? I kind of want to. Like a five hour affair. No, that's the problem. You can't really do that with with, with a, a podcast. <laughs> could you could you imagine Nate? Give him the rundown on that one. $35. Nope, $36. No, Peyton Manning's at $37 right now. We need an auctioneer for that show. An auctioneer? Yes. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I've been actually practicing with the past couple weeks trying to get my auctioneer's license. Really? No, not at all. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. <laughs> That's my pickup line to Girls at the Bar. So, oh, you ever dated an auctioneer before? By the way, uh, we're coming down to the last few picks. There was only one round left. I would be going. I would have to drop somebody to pick up a, a, a defense. Because <laughs> I, I no, actually, it'd be to pick up a kicker. Because I, I would take a defense over a kicker. You would take a defense over a kicker. Yes. All right. What defenses are out there? Mm, well, after looking at them, I'm going to look at the kickers. <laughs> I think I think Dennis is stuck with the Redskins. I I might be. Uh, my kicker will probably be unless these next two clown shoes take him, Jason Hansen. And there he goes. <laughs> we, well, we, need sound, we need sound effects in here. We need a good wah wah wah. Robbie Gould is going to be my guy. Oh and now he's gone. <laughs> wow. I actually, I'm actually kind of upset. I took uh, Nick Novak there as my kicker. I actually really wanted Matt Prater. Well, because he's your BFF. Because yeah, he is my BFF. And because I, yep. Well, I'll go over my first few round picks for everybody who just showed up. Ed, the mock draft is over. I took Darren Mc, 12 team league snake draft. I took Darren McFadden with the 12th pick. Roddy White with the uh, first pick in the second round. Frank Gore with the third pick in the 12th round. I was okay. Wes Welker, I don't know how he fell to me, but Wes Welker, first pick in the fourth round. Twelfth uh, twelfth pick in the fifth round was Vincent Jackson. I go Vernon Davis with the sixth, uh, the first pick in the sixth round. Uh, the seventh round, twelfth pick was Matt Ryan for me. I reach on Lance Moore, which I'm okay with the eighth pick first round. Ryan Williams, at this point I'm trying to fill up my bench with guys that I'm okay with. Ryan Williams, Arizona running back, ninth round, 12th pick, LeGarrette Blunt, back-to-back question marks, but I want the risk on it, was uh, 10th round, first pick, LeGarrette Blunt. Uh, Stephen Hill with the 11th round, 12th pick. Eddie Royal, another reach, but a guy I totally believe in this season is uh, who I'm going after with the 13th, 12th pick. LeMichael James, 14th round, first pick. Robbie Gould. Now, what's yours? You want mine now? Huh? Is that what you want? Yes. First round, pick four. I went with Calvin Johnson. Probably three picks earlier than we've normally been going, but I figured number one wide receiver in the game, might as well take him there. Second pick, went back with another wide receiver, Akeem Nix, has the ability to put Calvin Johnson touchdown totals, so I figured I had to grab him there. This is where I'm starting to struggle. Round three, Jamal Charles. You know, Nate likes him. I'm unsure about him this year. Fourth round, ninth pick, I got Michael Vick. First round potential in the fourth round, so I'm happy with that. Round five, pick four. Michael Finley, also a guy that wasn't about two years ago, was going in the first, second round. Um, I'm very happy with his pick as well. 
Round six, pick nine, need a running back. Went with Isaac Redman. He was the best available. Round seven, pick four, went with Peyton Hillis to, to back up Jamal Charles and to also stop Dennis from taking him. Probably draft him two rounds earlier than he normally would go. Round eight, pick nine, D'Angelo Williams. I need a running back depth. Round nine, pick four, Sidney Rice. I need another wide receiver. Here's my third one. Round 10, pick 9, Andrew Luck. Because I needed a quarterback. I figured at round 10 to back up Vic. You know, especially I think the Colts this year have an explosive offense. So I was happy with that pick as well. Round 11, pick 4, Mike Williams. Hoping for a bounce back year. Round 12, pick 9, Austin Cowley. Hopefully, I have no idea what Indianapolis is doing with their wide receiver set. He's going to be a 2 or a 3. Guy's got value. Hopefully, he blends well with uh, Luck. Round 13, pick four, I took Bennett, tight end for the Giants, because every tight end the Giants have gotten, whether it's been Boss or Ballard, guys that aren't, you know, aren't normally good tight ends, aren't your, pro, your, your stereotypical catching tight end, wide receiver tight ends, have done very well. So that's why I took Bennett, I just feel like maybe he'll thrive on that offense. Round 14, pick nine, Broncos, and then round 15, pick four, Nick Novak, kicker for the San Diego Chargers. Not bad, Nate, what did you think? Um, the... I, the people that that uh, well, Coffee does not like Mike Vick. By the way, in the chat room, he says Mike Vick isn't even a first round option, even among QBs only in Pennsylvania. So he probably he probably, uh, he probably rejected. Uh, he probably asked Vick out on a date, and Vick said no. That's what happens. Oh, it does. Vick's very particular about those things. <laughs> um, you you were risk you you thought risky picks were Vick and Charles. Um, they're a little bit risky. I think they're going to be fine though. I think Vic is going to do well this year. I think I think the Eagles in general are going to do a lot better this year. Uh, I think Jamal Charles will be coming back and doing just fine. And I like the fact that you handcuffed him with Peyton Hillis. Um, having Hillis and Charles there both, I think you're going to do uh, do a lot of damage with that. Um, I think between the two of you, I think John has a slightly better team. I, I like some of the moves you made later in the rounds, Dennis. I like the Ryan Williams pick. I like the Stephen Hill pick. But then you did like Eddie Royal, and I wasn't a big fan of that. And uh, there was another guy I can't remember now that I thought was a little bit of a reach as well. But overall, I think you, you're both going to make the playoffs with those teams. Wow, thank you. The mock draft playoffs? Yes, the mock draft playoffs. <sighs> Who wins? Who wins me and Dennis? Head to head? Yep. I'm gonna go with John. Of course. What you want to you want to know why? <laughs> why? Because me and Nate share this bond that you will never have, Dennis. Boy, if this was not a family friendly show, <laughs> yes, I already prank called so I could probably say gay sex, but I don't know. <laughs> you said it, not me. We just Are you talking about the caller. <laughs> Well, that that listen, that was a mock draft. You can go back and listen. We'll post it on Facebook. But uh, we got some time left. Let's go over some news, notes, and injuries from uh, this past few weeks. Give everybody caught up on what we think, where some of these guys should be taken first. I guess we should get the Ryan Matthews thing off the table. Ryan Matthews, broken clavicle, out four to six weeks. Everybody's saying more towards the six weeks. You probably should say add another week onto that to get – the kid back up to speed, maybe two before he gets 100% of the carries. Ryan Matthews, guys, in a 12-team league, what would you what would you say for Ryan Matthews' safe place to take him? Because he went still early. In this mock draft, just in case you guys missed it, he did go at the end of the second round. John? Uh, third, middle of third round is where he probably should go right now. Nate? I wouldn't touch until the fourth. I, I'm I'm okay at the beginning of the fourth round. I think... Fantasy playoffs and championships are not one to the end of the season. Guys like AP and Matthews, as though I don't like where they're being drafted now, if they were to fall around or a few slots, I, I'd be okay with taking them. It's all about value and who can help you in the second half of the season. Uh, talking about Peterson, he is he could actually come off the pup list this, sat, this Sunday. Uh, Leslie Frazier says uh, we're going to discuss it, but there's a good chance that could happen. if he goes If he comes off the pup list, does his draft value go back up to maybe the end of the first round to you guys? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. With, with Matthews being injured, with MJD, with his contract holdout, owners are going to be looking for someone to replace those guys. Pearson's the first guy that's going to jump into that top top 12. Absolutely. And the other thing is, with, with AP, even before Ryan Matthews got injured, I liked AP more than Matthews, and that's not going to change. 
I was drafting AP at the end of the first, about a month ago in the end of the first round of uh, mock drafts anyway, so yeah, I'm not, I mean, I mean, there were talks a couple weeks ago that he was going to be okay by week one, so. Yeah, I think he's going to be fine by week one. I wouldn't be, you know, he might be sluggish the first game or two, but he's going to be out there, he's going to get you some points, and then he's going to really turn it on and you'll be fine. Here, Here's my problem. I see a lot of people taking a two injury pulling running backs back to back. You know, I've seen people draft McFadden and then come back with Peterson. That's a concern for me. I've seen people, you know, go go uh, McFadden and, and try to think they're still in Ryan Matthews at the second round. It, it scares me. I think if you're going to go two of those guys, you you have to go one secure running back and and maybe one gamble of a first round running back that has fallen into the second round because of injury concerns. I think it's crazy and you're it's it's. It's gambling taking two injury prone running backs back to back. Didn't you kind of do that in this mock draft? Did I? No, he stayed away from. Me. He didn't draft Peterson the second round. I guess the question I have for you guys is Madden and Gore. Gore's... Gore's not up there with with what Peterson's injury and McFadden's career though. No, no, but he's still a guy that's got injured a lot to his career and can still get nicked up. I mean, he's been mentioned a lot in that kind of a thing. Here's here's my views on Frank Gore, guys. Is Frank Gore is a guy that can be better from subtraction of carries. He's a guy that wore down in the second half of the season that really hurt him. You take away carries with Michael James, with uh, Brandon Jacobs, who I'm really not concerned about at all. You add a passing offense around him, which what the 49ers have done. I really think with the subtraction of carries will make Frank Gore more healthier and be able to hold up over a full season. See, I don't, and I agree with you. I don't think the problem is is drafting a risky running back. I think it's just being smart enough to make sure you draft their handcuff. And I did. I I took Which, Michael James late in the draft, and I'm I'm comfortable with saying that Michael James will end up being his backup, his handcuff. And, and I think it's a smart move to do. But so therefore, I have I have no problem with drafting AP and Darren McFadden in the first two rounds, as long as you grab Toby Gerhart and whoever the hell is going to back up Darren McFadden and. Uh, in, uh, in, in Oakland, it d- doesn't really matter. Just grab the two and reach for the other two guys later. Because if they do stay healthy, if, if both those guys stay healthy this year, you have a slam dunk. I Listen, after I took, I believe it was the third round Frank Gore, I did not come back and take another running back until the uh, ninth round in Ryan Williams. Well, yeah. I, 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 what's your point there, Dennis? My point is, look look at that. I end up with Ryan Williams, LeGarrette Blount, which you, we both go back and forth on. I like him a little bit more than you do. And I get LeMichael James. Those are those are my running backs. I'm okay with if or when McFadden goes down, hopefully for not a long time, to plug in a, a Ryan Williams who will definitely have, I think, the starting job at the beginning of week two. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think Beanie Wells will be healthy enough to start the season. You know, you. I I think in retrospect, maybe I should have gone Legarrette Blunt. I still think in worst case scenario for Legarrette Blunt is fifty fifty on the carries. I'm not. I think I think you'll see the rookie more in passing downs this season than overall stealing the job from Legarrette Blunt this season. Next season, it's a crapshoot. This season, I think worst case for Blunt is fifty fifty. Yeah, well, we're not going to get into that argument because we both disagree with it. I, I think that's the only difference between me and you is that I would have drafted probably Jones instead of Blunt to back up McFadden. That's probably what I would have done. Or, or maybe Reese. I, I don't know. I, I definitely would have drafted an Oakland running back to, to play it safe because you don't even know if, if Williams – look, I agree with you. I love Williams this year, and I was actually pissed when you took him because I was taking him the same round. I, I do think he's going to start this year as well, but it would have been a lot safer for yourself. Take a guy like Jones or Reese. But here's the deal. In, in retrospect, if I was in a league with you and you didn't listen to the show, which a lot of people, you know, anyways, uh, and you in and, and you didn't know who I liked and who I didn't like, easily in the ninth or tenth round, I could have taken Peyton Hillis there. But you had to take him around earlier or a couple rounds earlier because you knew that's who I target. Yeah, I, that brings up a really good question because I was actually thinking about as draft was going on. I might have to do that regardless. That's the great thing about listening to the show is that if you have Charles, assume someone else in that draft room also likes Peyton Hillis as much as you do. It, you have to. It, I'm with you. I think it's I think it's just one of those catch forty fives, Nate. 
No, I see. I agree. I think here's the thing. I think John was taking him regardless. It wasn't the fact that you liked him. It's the fact that he wanted to get that handcuff, and someone out there is going to want to break up that handcuff. And so you kind of have to target if you if you're wanting if you're wanting the handcuff, you're going to take Jamal Charles. You're going to have to take Hillis earlier than he should probably go in order to lock up the handcuff because somebody else will do it just to screw with your team. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily that he knows that you like him as well as much as it was that. He knows that uh, regardless of you, somebody else out there will take him just to mess that up. And it sucks, but you got to look at your team and the fact that your starters are expected to start and put up numbers that you want them to, you know, that you're expecting them to put up. You can't look at it for the fact that you want to grab other guys just in case you want to plug them in because they have a lot of value. You, you're drafting Jamal Charles in the third round because you think Jamal Charles is a third round talent or above. And that's the way you have to approach it. You can't approach it any other, any other way. So sometimes you got to reach for your bench. Your bench doesn't start. You don't win championships by starting your bench. Oh, look, you're you're so right. But you you do win championships by stealing guys that are going to bounce back. This is you look you look up and down the list of guys that are falling, guys that you, you have fallen for grace. I mean, it, whether we like them or not, let me throw out names like Philip Rivers. Whether you like him or not, he's dropped. You know, Peyton Manning. Whether you like him or not, he's dropped. You know, uh, Matt Schaub dropped. Matt Schaub was always considered a, a top round running back or quarterback. Sorry, you know, you look at running backs now. You have, uh, let's see, Darren McFadden has dropped. Brian Matthews with an injury has dropped. Jamal Charles, you you see where you got him has dropped. Frank Gore, I got him in the third round, dropped. Uh, Michael Turner's dropped. Adrian Peterson has dropped. You know, you the Bradshaw Jackson, Fred Jackson, Stephen Jackson, all have dropped. These are guys that you have to know that dropped, and you can end up with two or three former first-round running backs on your team that if you do your homework and you know how the draft could co- easily come back. Let, let's let's look at – I don't think there's so many any former first-round wide receivers that have dropped so much. I think uh, when it comes to big – there's a huge drop-off in talent in wide receivers, but I think you just have to know where to take some of these guys, and you can end up with a team full of first-round running backs. I agree with you, but you know the difference was about what we were talking about, what you just brought up, is that all those guys out of Schaub aren't bench players. All those guys are going to start in some guy's team. They're, they're fantasy starters. And I was more making the point that your bench guys, when you draft those very risky, injury-prone guys, your bench guys need to be safe. They need to be the guys that back those guys up. Oh, was that it? I stopped listening about 10 minutes ago, so I don't know. Jeez. <sighs> I didn't know you guys were still here. Honestly, I was like, "Oh, look, I'm, I'm doing a podcast." I was, you know, look, waiting for that guy to call back, talk about. He agrees with you. He thinks that champion. He won his championship two years ago using his bench. Here's the thing: you've got to draft a smart bench. Like, I, like the thing. Like, I like the Ryan Williams pick. I think he's going to beat out Beanie Wells. I don't like Beanie Wells. It's not an injury thing. I just don't think he has the talent. I think Ryan Williams will have the starting job out there, and having him on your bench where you're taking him is great because when McFadden bites the bullet, which he will. You can plug in Ryan Williams, and now you've still got a number one starting running back in your roster. So it's that's the kind of thing you want to draft for when you're bench. It, you want a handcuff at the same time, but I'm not. I'm not 100% fully sold on a handcuff. If if I have, say, I have Jamal Charles and later on in the rounds, I can pick up Ryan Williams. I'll do that. I don't necessarily feel like I need to have Hillis. It would be nice, but I think Hillis on his own can. I think Hillis can hold his own and not just necessarily be a handcuff. And I think the same for Ryan Williams. You, you got an injury-prone running back. You got an injury-prone wide receiver. You just want to have someone on your bench that can step up and fill that role if need be. I, I've said this once. I've said this on almost every podcast that Peyton Hills will put up starting running back numbers this season. He, he just it the, everything is in line. He he had a bad season last year. He's trying to get that big ten million dollar contract that he wants. He has a body like Mike Allstott. He can catch the ball. So he will be in in a lot of passing downs. He will be in within the 20s red zone. So that means he can pound it in. He will take at least 50-50 carries for the first several games because they want to work Jamal Charles back in. This guy has a lot of value that people are not looking at. And the fact that, you know what, realistically, you probably could get him in the ninth or 10th round. You had to jump on him early because you knew that's who I wanted. But that's that's part of the chess game of fantasy football. Yeah. You know, the thing is, two years ago, two years ago when he was making that remarkable run with the Browns, 
I wrote an article about like week eight or whatever, whatever it was, saying you know there's no way Peyton Hill is going to keep this up right now. Trade him while his value is high. I don't believe he's that good of a running back. I still feel that way, but I agree with you 100. percent Where he is right now, the situation he's been dealt with is the perfect situation for him. He's not going to get any other value anywhere else. And I agree with you. He could he could end up with about eight nine touchdowns this year, just for the fact that I think he's going to be a red zone beast. And they're going to want to, they're going to want to give Jamal Charles some spells as well. I, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I think he has a lot of value, value and he stole them. Before we end the show, guys, John, what do you have to promote? Nothing. I have nothing right now. Well, <laughs> wow. Yep. Not a I nothing. single thing. Nope, no, I've been so busy these past couple weeks, I have nothing to give you guys. John, will you at least be on the fantasy baseball show that Nate Tucker will be hosting next, this week? I'm going to try, Nate. I have another long drive ahead of, ahead of me on the next Wednesday as well. It's my last one, and I'm done for about a year. Well, you just let me know because it, it won't be the same without you there. No nope. bromance. That is bromance right there. <laughs> oh. Staying out of it. Well, guys, I will say this. iTunes, head over there, rate, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know where you found us, how you heard us. You know, we love the fact that you guys are downloading. We're breaking our download records every month, and we keep going. So thank you guys so much. We're on Stitcher, Smart Radio. Head over there, stitch it up, like, thumbs up it, whatever you do over there on Stitcher. You can hear all of our past shows. You can go over and listen to us on our website, fantasysidelineshow.com. It's ever so changing and always adding. We'll start the web show up here soon, uh, as soon as the studio gets finished, and we're working hard on that. John and Nate probably won't be in it, but I'll I'll be here. Uh, Nate, what do you got coming up? Well, as you already mentioned, next Wednesday we'll be doing another fantasy baseball show. Um, You know, It's getting near playoff time for all your baseball leagues, so those of you that are in them, Tune in. We'll get you some guys to pick up on the wire, guys to get rid of, all that kind of good stuff. And if you ever want to email me, you can email me, Tucker at FantasySidelineShow.com. John, what's your email? Uh, Nathan Tucker at FantasySidelineShow.com. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Two, two different Nate Tuckers. Uh, you can get email me directly at FantasyHelp at FantasySidelineShow.com. Follow me on Twitter at FSidelineShow. Um, and uh, once again, let us know where you find us. We love fan interaction. We're one of the few podcasts that you know we try to reach out and have you guys join us off and on. We're gonna uh, start getting back to bringing some big guests on. You know, you can listen to the Steve Lemmy interview if you're into the movies and you've seen anything the Broken Lizard Group has done. They have uh, you know Super Troopers. He was he he was in big fantasy football guy and uh, Club Dread uh, and Beer Fest. All of them, that guy in here doing the show was with us. And we're working on getting somebody. I don't know if you guys are Crab Feast fans, but that's right. Jay Larson is going to be coming on soon. Really excited. I'm a huge Jay Larson fan. I love the Crab Feast podcast. You guys got to go out and listen to it. I'm really excited. So that's that's the show for the night, guys. Uh, thank you hanging out. We, we put out a decent podcast for you guys tonight. Tuesdays and Thursdays, Fantasy Football. Wednesdays, Fantasy Baseball. And uh, we'll try to sneak in another Fantasy Football show on the weekends. Reach out, guys. We we love having you listening. And uh, I think that's it. Nate, John, say good night. Good night, John. Good night, Nate. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather. Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. What's going on, everybody? This is Dennis Farrell from the FantasySidelineShow.com. Another mock draft show. This one after the injury is kind of giving you guys an idea of where everybody is going. We're still a few minutes away from draft time, about uh, 
about another minute or so before the draft room opens. With that time, I do want to say thank you, everybody, for the iTunes downloads. We are breaking our download record. We're, we're, we're top 15 on iTunes for fantasy football. We are we're up there on Stitcher, uh, Smart Radio. You can catch us there. We are on SchoolOfTheLegends.com, a website run by the NFLPA. A big thank you to our guest, Steve Lemmy, last week. That show is now four overall on iTunes for most downloaded shows for whatever the reason. I don't know why, but we own three of the top four most downloaded podcasts on iTunes. Guys, thank you so much. If I had an applause thing, I would, uh, I'd pop it out for you guys. Way to go. I didn't do it all. And I know normally we can have Nate's mom click and download over and over again. Not this time, Nate. No, she pulled a muscle in her thumb, so she's out for two, three weeks. Nice. John Dieter, what's up, buddy? Hey, I'm glad I don't have carpal t- tunnel syndrome like Nate's mom, though. I'm ready to draft tonight. That's for a different reason, but we're not going to get into it on the show. Mock draft, a lot of injuries. Chad Johnson headbutting his wife. We got a lot to discuss and go over as we as we move into this mock draft show. We will keep you up to date on who goes where, kind of giving you an idea. I'm I'm really excited. I do love the mock draft shows. Uh, I'm really excited, man. You sound excited. I am. So our draft room is loading. Given you know, if you're listening on the podcast, it doesn't even mind you any right now. Uh, it, you know what? Ryan Matthews out four to six weeks. They're saying more to the six week. I'm going to say, guys, today uh, we're still in preseason. Depending on where you are listening to this, he will miss probably up until week five or week six. That's going to be my guess. That might be pushing it. Here's here's my thinking, guys. He comes back from the clavicle injury. We're already at week four. I, I think that's safe to say week four. You 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 still have to get him back into game shape. I I really don't I really don't see him being a real factor until week seven or eight. I didn't really see him being a factor at all. I mean, everyone's really high on Ryan Matthews. I am not. I think that he's gonna. I just think he's gonna choke. And with this injury, I just think it's even more reason to stay away from him. I think he has value, but not in the first round. That's where everybody was tick- picking him. If you would have told me maybe. Maybe realistically, the end of the second round, sure, I'd have been okay with that. I, you you wouldn't have had any complaints with, but I'm not taking him in the first round. And certainly, you know what? If he falls to me at the uh, middle or the end of a fourth round in a 12 team league, I would take Ryan Matthews there. Yep, I don't wish injury upon anyone. I don't. I don't want anyone to get hurt. I don't want to, you know, see someone miss part of the season. And everything. The worst thing that have happened to me as a fantasy drafter is have Ryan Matthews get injured. It means that he's not going to get drafted in the first round anymore. It means that someone else is going to be taken, and I'm going to have to search for somebody else if I get after the Ryan Matthews pick. It, let me ask you guys this. Cedric Benson gets signed by the Green Bay Packers. To me, I think his ceiling is 650 yards to 700 yards, five touchdowns. Do you guys agree with that? I think he gets more touchdowns than that. Are you assuming he's not going to start? Because I really think that he's going to take the, the job away from Starks. I wish I could agree. I wish I could agree with you, but I'm not so sure that that I know. I know Starks will be there. He's younger. Cedric Benson probably will not get the full bulk bulk of the carry. So I don't know. I yeah. think they're going to use Ced as more of a third down back, short yardage back. I think he's going to get more touchdowns than five. I I put him more in the eight to ten range. But what uh, in a passing offense like Green Bay? Yeah, I'm more puzzled as to why Green Bay signed him. Why would you grab another guy that's just like Starks? You know, you think you get finesse back back there. They just grab another big guy. Maybe, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe so another team doesn't. You have uh, Richardson has the knee problems. You have uh, Ryan Matthews going down with the shoulder injury. M- maybe it was more of a preventative move so no one else could get him. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the Packers are afraid of the Browns. M- maybe not, <laughs> but you know what? W- what about the Chargers? I don't think the Packers are for the Chargers either. Here's the thing. I could see them more like, because I think the Lions could have benefited from a Cedric Benson at running back. I think they could have benefited benefit from anybody at running back. So I could see the Packers maybe making that move so someone in their division doesn't pick them up. Well, just so you guys know already, here we go. Um, it's Foster, Rice, and McCoy, one, two, three. I mean, pretty much whatever. And I have, I have the fourth pick right now. And I'm debating between Calvin Johnson and Aaron Rodgers. I, I will admit that there's been two seasons where I've gone um, undefeated. I took a quarterback in the first round. 
it's been I've only taken a wide receiver in the first round once in my life, and I'm leaning towards Calvin Johnson here over Aaron Rodgers. It's a a toss up. I could you go either way on it. Just that what Calvin Johnson brings to the table, and just what he can do in the red zone by himself. Good luck. Good luck finding a better wide receiver. Yeah, I was going to say less chat, more more draft. Wow. <laughs> Easy there. Slow it down, Sparky. Are so you? I, I, here's the thing, and I'm not going to sort of try and sway your decision either way, but I think what Roger did last year, that I think that is pretty much his peak. And a lot of times you see a guy finish number one in their position. Now, Calvin kind of did the same last year, but I don't see Rodgers finishing as high this year as he did last year. Um, I don't know. I think I think the Patriots made the right moves in adding a lot of receivers and tight ends to their roster so that Brady could uh, really just kind of tear – tear defenses apart, which is what he's good at. And I, I think Brady will finish ahead of Rodgers this year. I'm mean, not saying Rodgers won't finish high, but I think in that situation, I think I would lean more towards Calvin um, just because I don't think Rodgers is going to finish as high this year. And there's a plethora of quarterbacks this year that you can choose from. Well, Aaron Rodgers goes into the fifth pick. By the way, Jim in the chat room has some great insight here. Uh, Nate, since you're, don't, or, since you're not drafting, can you keep an eye on the chat room as we go? Uh, we'll do my best. I mean, not that you have a big, heavy load of, you know, work to do here, like watching the draft room. Thank you, silence. Let's, <laughs> uh, we're waiting for the next pick to go on. I decided in a 12-team league I want the last pick. I'm really, really excited this season. I want, I want to draft near the back end of all my drafts this season. I think that's the prime spot. I agree, because you know what you can get? McFadden. Adrian Peterson, 12-13. I'd take that any day. Well, I'm a little disappointed because 6th and 7th in the first round goes Chris Johnson, Tom Brady, then Drew Brees right after that. We have a run on quarterbacks then. The only problem with that is, you, well, we're gonna, we'll see. We'll see where those, where those mid-tier quarterbacks like the Romos, Vic, and uh, Rivers go in this draft. They should go about 4th, 5th round, and May, Manning as well. So maybe, maybe there's an early run on quarterbacks. Well, that... that took a big dent out of my my playbook of I, w- I was hoping in the back end I've seen Tom Brady slip to the end of the, f- the first round I was hoping maybe he would Jimmy Graham goes number nine God, everybody stealing all of my picks you you really want Jimmy Graham in the first round I was going to take him in the second uh, that might be a little bit of a reach right there I wouldn't take any any tight end until like the third or fourth round if I'm even going to reach that high for I was okay with that kind of reach though there's so many guys this year. The tight end is probably one of the deepest. Tight end is probably the deepest position of, of all positions. I think Jimmy Graham is the only one of the tight ends that can repeat what he did last season. I agree with you, but I don't think Jimmy Graham by himself is going to carry your team. A running back can carry your team. A wide receiver, a, a top tier wide receiver can carry your team, and so can a quarterback. You don't see it very often from a tight end. Well, I wasn't asking him to carry my team because I was going to hopefully have drafted a very capable replacement or 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 a centerpiece to Jimmy Graham. I think wide receiver running back is deep. If you know who to get, where to get him, you can come out looking nice. Uh, Andre Johnson goes 10th. MJD goes 11th. Leaving me with taking Darren McFadden uh, with my first pick at the end of the first round, and I will have the first pick in the second round. And this is a tough one. You know what? I'm not very... Ah, man. Uh, there we go, and we're back. I still got 11 seconds to pick my pick. I'm 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 scrambling. I'm going with Roddy White. I I know. Listen, here here's the thing. A I had computer issues. <laughs> I'll be honest. Oh come on! I had 11 seconds to uh, <laughs> pick who I wanted. B I really wanted Matthew Stafford. But I thought that was too early to take Matthew Stafford, who is now one of the top guys on the board. I don't like Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, Trent Richardson, I don't like Cam Newton. Rob Gronkowski, I don't think he'll do what he did last year. I think I think safe picks, Roddy White is right there. Yeah, he's he's absolutely the safe pick. I'm, just, I'm surprised you didn't go with AP. I was, I was just rooting I'm for you. Just to take him. Too. No, you know what? I got Darren McFadden. Why? I had a great conversation on Twitter where a guy was telling me how he, he, he took Ryan Matthews in the third round 
He took Adrian Peterson in the second round and how proud of himself he was. I And I was like, are you worried? I mean, you just drafted two of the top most injury-prone running backs. I mean, there's, if, if you're going one injury-prone running back, you should at least get someone you could trust that's healthy, right? It's, well, well, it depends. If you if you back yourself up, you're fine. I'm okay with it if you grab their backups. We saw we saw last year what Bush can do. So it's not, it's it's more. I see. I think running backs are very overrated. It's a product of the offensive line, in my opinion. That's the running back itself. You need the skills and the speed to be there. But uh, you grab a good system. You grab the running back from that system. You'll you'll make out fine. Well, the second round goes down with me taking Roddy White, Adrian Peterson, Matt Forte, three, Larry Fitzgerald, Gronkowski, DeMarco Murray, who I liked. I probably I probably may have should have gone DeMarco. Matthew Stafford at seven, Trent Richardson at eight, even with knee injuries. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that one is no, no thank you. I'm actually in a pickle right now. I have no idea who I want to draft. Nate, what do you think of, about that right now? About round two so far? Yes. Um, a little nervous about Trent Richardson. Uh, I, I hate to be super high on a rookie to begin with. I think I think he's going to do okay out there, but with the knee injury, the knee concerns, makes me a little more leery about him. I don't know. I think I might have rather taken him at the very end of the second round, maybe early third round. I mean, it's, it's not a huge difference, but at the same time. Uh, Forte, I think you missed. I think you should have taken AP, to be honest with you. I like Roddy White too, but um, I think AP would have been a better choice for you. Could, I couldn't go to injury prone backs and to give everybody an update. Uh, Trent Richardson at eight, Hakeem Nix, Brian Matthews at ten in the second round. That's as far as he has dropped. Cam Newton doesn't make it out of the second round at eleven and twelve. Marshawn Lynch, Victor Cruz takes the first pick in the third round. I don't like the end of the second round very much. I think that's way too soon for Matthews, too soon for Cam. Marshawn, eh, maybe that one's okay. I'm not a huge Marshawn fan, but... You don't like Beast Mode? You're all about Beast Mode, Nate? I thought you were. <laughs> I, I I don't know that he could get Beast Mode anymore. I just don't... I don't know. Something about that guy. He changes his mind like a woman. Tomorrow, you'll ask him, he'll be like, you know, I always told you I like Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> you know what my nickname in bed was, was Beast Mode, right? <laughs> really? That's what your boyfriend called you? <laughs> John Amici? No. All right. So I'm stuck now. I've, I've drafted two wide receivers. I have Calvin Johnson. I, let me tell you, I don't ever want the fourth pick ever again. So I got to draft a running back here. And uh, it's really come down to Jamal Charles. And I don't know if I really – or Steven Jackson, to be honest with you. Those are the two guys that are going through my head in the third round. Uh, beginning, beginning of the third round, I, I think I'm going to have to go with Charles, even though I do not like Charles at all this year. I'm getting made fun of in the chat room about my computer failing. I've, I i got to tell you, man, this Commodore 64, they said it lasts forever, but I think it's about to go out. Your computer fails as much as your fantasy. It's terrible. Oh, that was a good one, Nate. Really? That's that's <laughs> Nate, what, what spot in this draft are you taking? So, by the way, I think I like Jamal Charles in that pick as well. He's looked okay so far. I think you're... Yeah, I think you got no problems with him. I don't like him though. I don't want to take him there. I'm almost, I, I'm forced I, to. I can, I can understand that. I would be nervous too. I don't like taking injury prone guys or get guys that are coming off of an injury, things like that. But uh, you, you need a guy. You need a good back there. I think he has the ability to be that good back for you. I got no problem with him in the third round. You just picked up a f- former first round running back. Even, even last season, he was a first round running back. He drops to the third round. By the way, just in case you guys don't know, it's Victor Cruz in the third round, Brandon Marshall, Greg Jennings, Jamal Charles.